Hey everyone, Mayhem Prone here from Dimension M, where today, 2017 is finally over, and I don't know about you, but I had a pretty decent year. I've played a bunch of really cool games that I want to show you, so with that being said, these are the top 10 games that I played in 2017. But first I have to explain the rules. I can include any game that I played through for the first time between Christmas 2016 and Christmas 2017. The only exception, of course, being games from my early childhood that I rediscovered this year. Because really, after not playing a game for almost a decade, it might as well be my first try. But with that out of the way, let's get into these games! Well, it looks like we're already up to the game I rediscovered this year because number 10 is Custom Robo Arena. This game is the final entry in the Custom Robo series, and also the only one I've actually played. Gameplay consists of you fighting other robots in a small 3D arena. Think of it like Beyblades, but instead of fighting of tops, you're fighting with tiny robots. Oh my gosh, I'm getting old. When I played through this game, I had one major reaction. This is pretty similar to Pokemon. Okay, here's the story. You are a young child who's brand new to town and you're given your own custom robo, so your job is to go out into the world and battle other custom robo trainers to get stronger and gain more experience so that you can ultimately take down an evil criminal organization trying to take over the world. Uh, uh, that's Pokemon. While the stories may be pretty similar, the actual fighting is very different as I mentioned. Instead of being like an RPG, it's much closer to a fighting game. The problems are is that like Pokemon, the gameplay gets pretty repetitive, and the soundtrack is pretty forgettable, and the whole game is only about 10 to 12 hours long. But other than that, I think it's pretty fun. I liked it, but it's not going to change my life, which is why it gets to number 10 on my list. In 2017, I decided I wanted to try to get into a new genre. After thinking about it for a while, I decided to play a tactical RPG. And thus, number 9 is Fire Emblem Fates Birthright. Now, for my first Fire Emblem game, I can say I had a pretty good time. The gameplay is a bit repetitive, but it's also pretty addicting. I really enjoyed how you got to design your own castle and interact with all your teammates within it. It added some charm to a really nice game. But this leads to one of my biggest problems of the game. All of the units are theoretically expendable. Of course, I had permadeath off because I'm really bad at games, but they're all expendable. Therefore, none of them get too much character development, which made it really hard to get invested in the story. And the saddest part is, most of the characters that I actually started to get invested in got killed off as part of the story, even though I had permadeath off. The lack of enjoyable characters that actually make it through the entire game makes the story really forgettable. Though there is one major saving grace. Out of all the fictional creatures ever created, my favorite are dragons. I have always thought dragons are the coolest things ever. And in this game, you play as a character who can turn into a dragon. That is so cool. Overall, good gameplay, but a forgettable story. After playing this, I'm definitely willing to give Fire Emblem another chance in the future. Number 7 is Chrono Trigger! I've always really liked RPGs, but I've only really played a few of them, so I thought to myself, where's a better place to start off than one of the most famous RPGs ever made? Chrono Trigger has awesome gameplay, a sprawling and detailed world, colorful characters, and an exhilarating soundtrack that pumps me up every time I hear it. Most of the time when I'm playing an older game, I kind of expect it to be dull because of how games were made back in the day. But the thing is, if I didn't know better, I would have thought this game came out in the last two or three years. In this game, you play as a young boy named Chrono who has to travel through time with his friends in order to save the world from an evil that threatens to destroy it. It may sound pretty simple, but they put so much detail into each of the civilizations that you visit that it actually feels like a real world. Chrono Trigger is an extremely unique and memorable experience, which is why it makes it to number 8 on my list.
Now, when I'm really being honest with myself, I have to admit, my favorite series of video games ever created are the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. They are all so well made, so well written, and so fun that I just can't get enough of them. But at the beginning of this year, I came to a realization. I've really only played two of them, the Explorers games and Super Mystery Dungeon, so I thought to myself, I have to change that. So across 2017, I played the other two games in the series. And I love them so much that both of them made it onto this list. Now number 7 has to be Pokemon Mystery Dungeon's Blue Rescue Team. Like the other Mystery Dungeon games, Blue Rescue Team is a roguelike where you travel through randomly generated dungeons. You're a human who has transformed into a Pokemon and simultaneously lost all of your memories, so you and your newfound partner Pokemon have to travel through Mystery Dungeons in order to figure out the secret of your origins and to protect the world from a new threat. Now like any other Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game, I love this, but out of the four, I would probably say it's my least favorite. The gameplay in this game is still really tight, but since it's the first game in the series, it's missing a lot of the features that I really came to love. This causes the game to be a lot slower than the others, but it's still really fun to play. My other big issue of the game is the length. It's by far the shortest game in the entire series. I beat this game in about 25 hours. I beat this game in about 25 hours. I beat this game in about 25 hours. And I took my time, but I was able to complete the story in 12 hours. But despite all this, it still has great gameplay, an amazing story, fun characters, and an awesome soundtrack. So I really can't hate it. It may be my least favorite of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, but it's still a quality entry, which is why it makes it to number 7 on my list. Over the decades, many game series have declined and even disappeared. Every once in a while, a series tries to return. Most of the time, it doesn't work out really well, but every once in a while, you'll get a true masterpiece. What I'm trying to say is, Sonic is back! I've always loved the old 2D Sonic games, but I can never beat them because no matter how hard I try, I can't make it through a game with such few lives. That makes Mania the perfect Sonic game for me, because it has all of the gameplay and art styles that I loved from the Genesis era while having unlimited continues. The physics are on point, the music is freaking awesome, and the collection of nostalgic stages mixed with brand new ideas makes this the perfect game for Sonic fans new and old. I really have to give props to the character designers, because the hard-boiled heavies look so cool. Overall, there's really a reason why people are calling this the best Sonic game in over a decade, which is why it more than deserves to be on my list. I love video games, and I also really love animation. What do you get when you put these two things together? You get Cuphead for the Xbox One. In this game, you play as the titular Cuphead and his brother Mugman as they fight a series of challenging bosses in order to save their souls from the devil. And in addition to being one of the best, Cuphead is probably the most difficult game I played throughout 2017. There's some bosses, such as the Genie, that we would fight for over an hour with no luck, but if we kept trying, we'd eventually persevere. This is also one of the few games on this list that I haven't beaten yet, but we are up to the final boss. My only real complaint with the game is that I don't really like the soundtrack. Most people love it, but I find it pretty forgettable. Most of the time, I'll definitely prefer listening to a remix over the original song, which is pretty odd for me. But this complaint doesn't even come close to diminishing how amazing the hand-drawn animation looks. You can see the detail in every character, in every background, in every battle. I can't even fathom how much work was put into this. Overall, Cuphead is a masterpiece with great gameplay and amazing art. I really hope we get more games like this in the future. Well, as promised, we're back to my favorite series because number four is Pokemon Mystery Dungeons Gates to Infinity. 
Now this is gonna be the most controversial game on my list because almost any fan of the series would say that the Rescue Team games are better than Gates to Infinity. Well then why is my opinion so different? Well I believe that Gates really exceeds in two categories. The first aspect would be gameplay. One of the main arguments you see levied at the Mystery Dungeon games is that they're too repetitive. People just get bored going through dungeons over and over again, and unlike the other games in the series, Gates to Infinity does everything it can to remedy this. In addition to the classic gameplay that we love, on certain floors within certain dungeons, the player will be taken off the grid and allowed to free roam. On these floors, players can fight Pokemon and solve rudimentary puzzles. This new mechanic isn't particularly fleshed out, but for what's there, I really like it. I hope they bring this back someday in the future. And when you're not in dungeons, the game takes on aspects of a city builder. You have to build up your Pokemon paradise of new shops in order to get new items and abilities. These new mechanics were completely unnecessary, but I think they add an extra layer of charm to an already fun game. The other reason why I believe that Gates is superior to Rescue Team is because of the characters. In the Rescue Team games, the characters were good, but very few of them were really memorable. In contrast, Gates has some of the best characters in the entire series. Every main character in Gates to Infinity are completely distinct and totally unforgettable. Since I loved all the characters so much, I was able to get really invested in a story that would have been mediocre otherwise. All things considered, I just really love Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, and Gates to Infinity had a few aspects that I'd say gave it the edge over Rescue Team. I would recommend this to any fan of Mystery Dungeons, which is why it makes it to this place on my list. Number 3 is Blaster Master Zero for the 3DS. This is a remake of the classic NES game Blaster Master done by the brilliant people over at Inti Creates. And like any NES game, it doesn't really have much of a story. Basically, you're a scientist in the distant future who has to travel through a bunch of abandoned structures in your tank, Sophia III, in order to save your pet frog. The story is rather simple, but I'm okay with it because of the gameplay. As you've most likely noticed, it's another 2D platformer, and I'm sorry, but I just really love them. I've always had a distaste for non-linear games. I always get lost, annoyed, and then bored. But Blaster Master Zero is a non-linear game done right. The presence of a well-made map system combined with the great architecture of each area makes each level fun to explore without being too cryptic. But the main reason I find myself coming back to Blaster Master Zero so often is because of the atmosphere. When the game wants to be exciting, it's exciting. When the game wants to be mysterious, it's mysterious. And when the game wants to be creepy, it's really creepy. The music, art style, and level design come together perfectly to make every level feel special. By and large, Blaster Master Zero is a very unique and fun 2D platformer that I would suggest to anyone who's looking for some old school fun. Now it's always been rare for the DS and 3DS to get truly exclusive games, and when they did, they typically weren't that good. But in 2017, we were given one of the greatest and the most underrated 3DS exclusives ever. The runner-up spot can go to none other than Ever Oasis for the 3DS. Long ago, the desert was a prosperous place filled with tons of oases where weary travelers could relax and set up shop. All of this changed when the forces of chaos arrived in the desert. They mutated the innocent animals into monsters and destroyed all of the oases. And now, your oases is the last one standing. You must travel through the desert, fighting monsters, saving citizens, and collecting resources in order to build up your oasis to combat the forces of chaos. Ever Oasis is an open world adventure game where you must explore a desert to find all of its secrets while simultaneously building shops and stores in your oasis. I really love this game because of the sheer amount of content. There's always something really interesting to do. 
The story isn't really anything to write home about, but it's definitely serviceable. But overall, the game is just fun to play. The only major problem I have with this game is the lack of a good post-game. Once you've completed the story, there isn't really that much new to do, but I had so much fun throughout the campaign that I don't really mind. In conclusion, when looking solely at gameplay, Ever Oasis is probably the best thing I've played all year. But there's still one game that I would rank above it. I played many games in 2017, but the best out of all of them would have to be Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack for the 3DS. In this game, you play as the titular Gunvolt, who is a superhero with the power to control electricity. You need to use your superpowers to defeat powerful criminals in order to protect a futuristic version of Japan from complete destruction. Once again, it's another 2D platformer and I know I have a problem, but they're really fun. You have to use your gun and your electric abilities to make your way through levels, each ending in a big boss fight. As 2D platformers go, Gunvolt is pretty easy. Gunvolt 1 didn't give me very many problems, and Gunvolt 2 was a total pushover. But in all honesty, the levels are mostly just a formality before the boss fights, which I have to admit are absolutely amazing. One of the most consistent ways to make me love a video game is to give me really good boss fights, which is one of the reasons why I love Shovel Knight so much. And Gunvolt has some of the best boss fights I've ever played. Each villain has so many moves, so many voice lines, and so many accents that it really makes you feel like you're in a comic book or a movie. Overall, while the game's pretty easy, the boss fights and the cinematics make it a complete joy, especially for someone who loves superheroes as much as I do. But my favorite thing about Gunvolt Striker Pack is the story and the world building. I found that both games in the collection were full of interesting characters and fun stories. I can definitely see Gunvolt being adapted into a TV show or a book. Even now, months later, I can't help but come up with cool new ideas of stories that could take place in this world. There's so much potential. If you own a 3DS or a Switch, I would highly suggest you get Azure Striker Gunvolt Striker Pack as quickly as possible. But that's just my list. What awesome games did you play in 2017? Leave a comment down below. And until next time, I'm Mayhem Prone from Dimension M, and goodbye.